Hello people of Twitch. Um, I'm just getting ready to make some cool stuff today. I've got a lot on the bead mat. That's what this thing is. It's nice and fluffy. It keeps the beads from rolling around. Um, so yeah, lots of projects today to work on. So I think um, this is for Christmas stuff. I made a bunch of cool Christmas stuff and a test video. Um, I don't think I was going to be uploading them anywhere because one was really buggy and the other one the sound was off, but I made a bunch of really neat stuff. Um, so we're just give this all a whirl today. Hopefully the uh, recording and the video will keep up with what I'm doing here. We've been having a little bit of problems with the internet bugging out on us and dropping frames and disconnecting entirely, so we'll see how this all goes. Um, my first project is going to be one for my mom. I'm going to use some freshwater pearls and some glass beads. They're just really pretty faceted crystals. Um, to make her a bracelet and a pair of earrings, uh, she actually requested this a couple days ago and I decided to save this project for my Twitch stream. So just get all those beads out of there. I typically reuse these little plastic bags. They're really handy. They last a long time. Um, and just put that in a pile over there. Uh, let's see here. So for starters, we'll grab a pair of scissors and cut open the strand of pearls. I don't know if this is still the case, but they used to sell pearls by the gram. Oops, there goes a flying bead. It happens a lot. Even with a bead mat. So, anyway, as I was saying, beads are typically sold by the gram, or at least they used to be, so the holes are very tiny. I don't know if you can see that or not. Very small. They don't fit on most head pins or eye pins. Or You can get large hole pearls specialty, but... That's all good. We're going to grab some tiger tail. I have beading supplies all over. They're not just right here. <clears throat> A little bit of cat hair. Piece of string. So we'll just grab some tiger tail. It's a steel coated nylon wire. No, no. Nylon coated stainless steel. <laughs> I'll get this straight. So we're going to cut off the length of this for a bracelet. I typically um, cut off longer than what I need because it's just easier to work with. I think some people are more exact, but I am not. As evidenced by my beading mat, but it's kind of chaotic when I make stuff. That wire is gone forever. It dropped on the floor. I'll find it in a couple years. Here we go. Cut that, put that over there. there. So there's some tiger tail. I probably will find the other tiger tail later, but I don't want to go digging underneath the desk while I'm live on Twitch, so it would be rather boring for you and kind of noisy for me. Or I'd be noisy. Hearing me swear, I maybe hit my head on the desk. So, take out some of these wire guards. I got them in a handy dandy little, all different kinds. I got bright silver, gold, copper, brass, uh, gun metal, and some antique silver. So, that's pretty cool. I use these a lot. Uh, these are base metal. Uh, probably have nickel in them. Can't say for sure though. I bought them quite a while ago and these are silver plated crimp beads. They're pretty handy. These are nickel free too. I try to use nickel free as much as I can. It's just hard to find the wire guards in nickel free. I use them in like everything. So they might be nickel free. I don't really remember. 
So we're going to take one end of the tiger tail, the other one's free. String on the crimp bead. Trying to move over a little bit. Then oh, there's a little cat hair here. There are kitties in the studio. You may hear them meowing in the background sometimes. They get along for the most part. You might hear them arguing too. If they argue too ferociously, I'll probably put up an intermission and see if I can't resolve the kitty kitty argument. So see it's on there. <coughs> Take the crimp, bead, crimp pliers, crimp the bead. I don't know how well you can see this. I had to turn down the resolution a little bit of the camera so it would stream a little bit smoother. Uh, squish that a little bit. Take these bent nose pliers, squish that down a little. I don't trust the crimp pliers to crimp this down hard enough that it won't come flying off. So I always give it a little extra squeeze. Um, well, that's Piglet. Yes, I have a cat named Piglet. It's a long story. I'll tell you about it sometime. So my mom requested like a few pearls on the top of the bracelet and then filler for the rest. So I thought um, doing some filler with these black beads would look really sweet. So that's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to put those back up there. And let's just string these on. It's kind of meditative. Beading is my zen. Just string them on one at a time. They're like... um. For seed beads, there's like special uh, tools you can get that can help you string beads in multiples at a time. They're pretty cool. I actually have one, thanks to a friend of mine, she gave it to me and I'll have to show it to you guys sometime. It's pretty cool looking. Runs on batteries and just spins. So I'm just stringing some beads. Let's see if I can't find the hole. There we go. So my mom has pretty tiny wrists. This isn't going to take very long. As you can see, some of this other stuff I got, like I said, I've been making Christmas stuff. And I've actually got a show tomorrow. So I'd like to get some more of this Christmas goodness made up for that tomorrow. I have a really pretty snowflake. I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's right here. Um, the cats <laughs> recently broke a candle holder of mine. And uh, they, uh, those snowflakes were decorating the candle holder. So I'm just going to get out my tape measure. This is like a tailor's tape measure. It's nice and flexible. I'm just going to measure this real quick to see how long I've made it so far. Two and a half inches. So now I want to put some pearls on there, I think. Put the tape measure over here. It's kind of chaotic over here. Let's see. She has about a six inch wrist, so very dainty. I don't think. I want to put a little spacer in between these, I think. Show off the pearls a little bit more. Grab another one of these black crystals. Oh my goodness, there's hair everywhere. There we go. Life with cats. Yep, so I have four kitties. My oldest is Piggy. He's about 18. He was a stray when I found him. He, so I rescued him off the mean streets. And he's just one of the sweetest cats. Very affectionate. He's 
my best friend's favorite cat and probably my boyfriend's favorite cat. Um, so he's well loved. He's also very, very talkative. So let's see, that's five. Uh oh. There's a kitty getting sick in the background. I'm really sorry. Really sorry. Kind of gross. Life with cats. So, I'll have to clean that up after I'm done here. I don't want to get my hands all gross. So we'll just start stringing the other side on. Using these we'll just go up the sides. And we'll make a really nice dainty bracelet. Cats have to help me start out with a bang by getting sick, but they might be more nervous than I am. I used to uh, teach jewelry classes at Michael's and I don't think they would have been too pleased with me if I had taught jewelry classes and done Twitch streaming at the same time. <laughs> so, partly because I'm going to show you guys tips and tricks on how to use all this stuff. So, let's take a look here. Is that going to be too big for my mom? Mm, it's going to be close. Let's take a look here. So scientific measures how many beads I've got by going to the other side. Let's see. Need three more beads. Grab those three. I only grabbed two. So my mom graciously allowed me to have some studio space in her house. So she has a dog. You may hear him barking sometimes. He is the great protector. He's a good, good, good dog. Okay, so that's about that. I'm just going to measure this real quick to make sure it's not going to be too long. If it is, I'm going to have to take it apart and restring it. Oops, sorry. Turn it into the camera. Yeah. That would be about right, I think. Give her a little bit of wiggle room so it's not right up against her wrist. Let's see here. String this wire guard back on. I think wire guards are way underrated and underused. They, uh, they really help keep the jewelry like the I'll show you in a minute but the the jump rings or the split rings that you use at the end to connect the uh, clasp to really keeps them from sliding off so especially if you use jump rings like I do I like using jump rings over split rings mainly because it makes it so I can resize it super easy you know, if somebody needs it to be a different length and it only needs to be resized by like half an inch or so I can just add some more jump rings or add a chain or take the crimp pliers again do that real quick sorry my arms kind of bonking into the boom for the camera so hopefully it's not jiggling too much so I tightened that a little bit. Got a little bit of extra tiger tail, actually a lot of extra tiger tail. I might save that for another bracelet. Grab some wire cutters. Cut off the extra tail. Straighten that out a bit. Put that over there, actually. Oh my goodness. I almost dropped that on the floor too. So there's that. Now to finish this off, we need to use some jump rings and a clasp. So here are jump rings. Don't mind the hair all over them. 
it's piggy hair that's black so they're my Halloweeny cats they're white orange and black so I've always called them my Halloweeny cats and two of them are legitimate rescues piggy and angel um, and then LAC and Meow. LAC is Meow's mother. So, and they're both Manx kitties. And the really cool thing about Manx is that they can have no tail, which is like what you'd see at shows, to a little stub of a tail to a full tail. So they're pretty cute. LAC has a little stub of a tail. And she's a little overweight and um, she got a little overweight after she got fixed so she was my little plump baby and then Miawa has a full tail and he's very fluffy so he was desperately wanting to share my chair with me while I was trying to do this stuff and I'm just like no kitty can't share my cha my chair today. It's just a little too difficult to try to maneuver all this stuff when trying to make jewelry and talk at the same time with moving cat right behind you. But there's the bracelet, just crystal and freshwater pearls, the clasp and some jump rings. But you see, jump rings have like this little opening right here. And that's what we're trying to keep it from sliding off of when we put the wire guard on. So the wire guard will keep it, the tiger tail from slipping right in between those cracks. So it's pretty cool. Now we're going to make her a little pair of earrings. Let's see here. Grab some head pins. These are nickel free head pins. So they're pretty cool. They're three inch head pins, so they're super long, super easy to work with. Um, they're not too stiff. The wire's not too stiff, so that's nice. Pretty easy to bend. And then I gotta grab some chain. I have like beads and stuff everywhere. Grab some chain. That'll be good enough, I think, for this pair of earrings. And my mom didn't want them too long, so let's see. We're gonna do this little dangle first. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna put crystal on the bottom. Let's see if I like this design. I may put the pearl on the bottom. We'll see if it fits on this head pin first, though. Oh, just barely fit. I don't know. What do you think? How does that look? Not too bad. They'll look better when they're all strung up. There's another one. I'm going to take round nose pliers. Put these back. Round nose pliers. Just start manipulating this wire to make a loop. Got some tails, so we're going to wrap it around. We'll finish that up in just a second. Actually, I'm really excited for my mom to see these. I think she'll really like it. Oop. There we go. Extra tail of wire. And another extra tail of wire. Put these back. Grab bent nose players. Sure, you can't figure out why they're called bent nose pliers. They got a nice bend in them. They help you get into tight spaces. There's that. 
So right now I'm just flattening this little piece of wire that's sticking out. Yeah, so I imagine I'll do some really nice tutorials down the line for you with maybe more of a close-up so you can see what my fingers are really doing and manipulating. So that ought to be fun. Grab some chain now. She wanted these fairly short, so let's count some lengths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll do seven lengths. Take some wire cutters. Let's see if I can't. This chain is fairly thick, so I'm not sure I'll be able to cut it very effectively, but we'll see. I might have to grab some different chain. Yeah, that's not cutting very well. Oh. Not all chain has this, but sometimes it has a they're like jump ring loops. Oop, there's another cat. Hi Mia. See if we can't. Oh baby. He's talking to me. I'm gonna pet him for just a second. Where are you? Yeah. Yeah. Such a good kitty. <laughs> they do like to talk. They're some of the sweetest cats I know. So I know I'm probably totally biased, but one, two, three, four, five, six. That's Piglet. They are they're just so sweet. Just such good kitties. <laughs> They're determined to help today. Oops. Oh, there we go. Got it off. There we go. So there's that. I think we're going to take some smaller jump rings. These are 6 millimeter, I think. And we'll just connect these to the ear wires. These are also nickel free. I try to cut off the bottoms of the packages. It says nickel free on them. The nickel part, there we go. Nickel free. Just to make sure I remember that it's safe for people with sensitivities to metal, and it's specifically nickel. These ear wires are pretty cool. They're, um, from Fire Mountain Gems. If you've never heard of them, they're a pretty awesome company. They sell all sorts of jewelry making supplies and other neat crafting stuff, but mostly jewelry making supplies, but still. They're, they're pretty awesome, but they sell, uh, I bought these ear wires from them. So they came in a package of 50, I think. 50 pieces, 25 pairs, and you probably shouldn't do this. My nails get really beat up by me doing this, but I do it anyway. Open up the jump ring with my nail and a pair of pliers. But that's all good. So, oh, there we go. There's that. And then we need two more jump rings. I only took two out. These may be too long for my mom. She may want them a little bit shorter, but we'll see. We will see. So this is like the first project of the night. I'd like to make a couple more, but we'll... Grab 
on this. Put that on there. String this on there. Make sure these are the same length. Ready? Let's find out. Yeah, we did good. You can look at those. Those are pretty cute. I think they work particularly well with the bracelet. Oh, so I was going to tell you more about these ear wires real quick. They're silver, uh, silver plated over surgical steel. So they're pretty decent for sensitive ears. I am unfortunately, I think, allergic to the binder between the sterling silver and the metal. Um, so my ears still have a few difficulties if I wear them for too long. But for most people with metal allergies or sensitivities or whatever, I think these will suit just fine. Um, so set this stuff aside. Let's set it right here. I'll probably put that in a nice little organza bag for my mom later. So we have out, I'm going to put some of this stuff away. Get it, or at least move it. We'll just move it for now. Let me use this later. Let's see, that's crystal. Put that back in the little bag. That I took it out of. So I have a really nice little snowflake and the cats knocked over my candle holder and broke it and there were these beautiful little snowflakes still in there and they're either resin or ceramic, I'm not sure which. And I just thought when I saw them that they'd make great pendants. So that's what we're going to recycle, recycle this candle holder stuff from. I have three more of them. They are just so pretty. I think they're a little bit big for earrings. But, so this is use stuff up whenever we can. Might as well recycle it, turn it into something beautiful. So, so I got out some white quartz. I thought that might look nice to go with uh, Snowflake. I'm thinking of turning it into a necklace, actually. So we have some white quartz and some really cool bright blue pearls. These of course have been dyed. These <laughs> Nature does not provide such a pretty blue pearl. Um, nature does however pro provide like very pretty mauvey pink, black, and white pearls. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can look all that sort of stuff up on Google. It's, Google is awesome. <clears throat> Have a question? Ask Google. So, I'm just going to, there we go. Take those off this. So beads come on cord. Most of the time they don't come loose. And this cord, you cannot just put a clasp on. You're going to want to restring whatever you buy the beads off of because that cord will not last. It's a temporary, temporary stringing thing. Oh, come on, Piggy, get down. There. So make a very pretty necklace here, I think. I have some... Oh, gosh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Do you... Do you do more tear it. Some of my friends may know how to pronounce that better than me. Um, this is a new stone for me, relatively new. Um, and it's a very pretty, like denim, denim blue. I don't know how well it'll go with these pearls, but we'll see. We're also going to use some of these pearls. I think. I think that'll go well together. Do you think that blue? this blue. They both go, but they don't go together. So I'm going to have to make a choice. I was thinking of using these blues as accents, this really nice light blue. And that may go better with the, with the stone. So 
So we'll set these aside for now, I think. I'm going to pile over here. I really love those pearls, though. They're very pretty. I think the these crystal checking glass beads I picked out will go a little bit better with the stone. So let's take a look here. We have lots of shapes and sizes of crystal and glass to pick from. Um, I just kind of picked out an assortment so I could show you guys some of my process, figuring out how I will make these go together. So these are actually really cool. Those are spacer beads. I really like them. They're a lot of fun. They got little polka dots on them and they're faceted. So facets are the cuts on the glass or bead. Like I don't want to call these faceted. They're like spiral cut. White quartz. Very pretty. But like this stuff. Let's see if I can spin that around. Yeah, very cool. So those might look super nice with this. I got to put those back in there for now, I think. And then I have some very tiny ones that'll work great as spacers. I don't think these little Czech squares, Czech glass, um, were made in the Czech Republic. And they're really cool. Um, yeah, you'll have to forgive me. I don't. Yeah. Anyway, they're they're just really pretty. So there's some history there. You can also use Google to look that up too. It's pretty fascinating stuff. So when I am not distracted by all sorts of beads, maybe I'll give you a rundown on some of this beady history. So we'll use these. These may also look nice. Ooh. I'm just catching the Christmas beads. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll use these small ones. So I think the colors go okay, but the uh, shape is kind of off-putting for this design, I think. So let's drop those beads down. I do have really cool trays that uh, my boyfriend got me to help me design jewelry. They're super cool. I'll see if I can't grab one for you and show it to you. They're just uh, weird. Felt covered plastic. So they help the beads to keep the beads from rolling around. And then they've got the measurements so you can see how long you're making your necklace and little compartments to put beads in. Of course, this one is covered in kitty hair, but, you know, details. So, but most of the time I just use the bead mat and I everything. So, most of the time it works, sometimes it doesn't. I also have one for bracelets, specifically for bracelets, and that one's pretty cool. I use it more often than the necklace one, I think. So, oh, there's another kitty. I think they're feeling a little left out. Let's see if I can't. I'm trying to take the cord off this bead. They capture beads on the ends a lot of times and you have to either cut them or remove the knot very carefully. There we go. It can be kind of a pain to get that last bead off of strands sometimes if it's knotted into place. So we have these and these really pretty navy blue gemstone beads and then white quartz and freshwater pearls. Oh goodness. There we go. The cat was attached to my chair. So move these out of the way. These are Christmas charms. Holiday charms. They've got little pine cones. 
got here candy canes Ooh, candy cane bells I routinely distract myself with other means while I'm trying to make stuff as if that is not completely obvious okay so this side is the open side let's see here we're gonna start by I think putting a jump ring where did I put my other jump rings here we go these are slightly larger jump rings I believe they're seven millimeter and they're just a tad bit thicker so they their gauge is a little bit better a little I can't bend these with my fingernail like I do the six millimeter ones I have to use two pairs of pliers we're just gonna string that up like so and this is just so the pendant hangs right there just so that hangs right that way it'll hang front facing not like this so I'm gonna grab some more tiger tail there's other names for tiger tail like they're mostly brand names like AFQ-Flax and SoftFlax and this is just generic tiger tail I believe so I bought it from a friend's D-stash sale and the tag was not on there so I'm just gonna call it generic, generic tiger tail grab a couple more crimp beads because you crimp them shut. I grab three. I only need two. Grab a couple more wire guards. These are really hard to get out of these neat containers, so I have to use pliers to get them out. Since you're going to be making jewelry, you're going to have pliers anyway, so it's not a very big deal. Um, just saying. And repeat the process here. String the crimp bead on. Grab a wire guard, kind of squish it towards the ends to reach each other. String that on. There we go. Grab the crimping tool again, crimping pliers. Crimp that shut. It kind of makes it into a U shape. Then you take these and you squish it together. Squish the edges of the U together so it makes like a little tiny, makes the crimp be a little nicer looking than just a flat piece of metal. Grab that, cut that off, put that just right there. Now I'm going to throw this away. I don't want to accidentally grab it thinking it's the tail of my tiger tail. The end of my tiger tail. So let's see here. So when I start a design, I typically start with smaller beads first and gradually work my way up to the bigger beads. And I think we're just going to stay with that formula for now. So I'm going to grab a little bead and string that on just a little tiny little bead. Grab some freshwater pearls. Put those on there. And typically I'll just follow this pattern for just a little while. There's a small bead and a bigger bead. Because this is going to be on the back of somebody's neck and unless they have short hair it's not going to be seen. And so while I still want it to be pretty, I don't want to put all the really awesome beads towards the back. Because the chances are it's not going to be seen. So lots of people out there wear short hair though, so you never know. So still pretty, still worth it. Do 
do this for a while. If you need help seeing the holes for the beads, because sometimes it can be rather dainty, most of the time I can feel the holes now. So <laughs> that's how long I've been making jewelry, almost 20 years. So I don't always need to see the hole to know where, where it is. Just string these all together. Anyway, I was going to say, if you need help, you can get like a pair of magnifying glasses that go over your eyes, or you can use a third eye, or not third eye, third hand. Um, a lot of those often come with magnifying, uh, magnifying eyes on them, so glasses, magnifying glass on it. I'm distracted by beads. Who needs to talk? I have beads. So as you can see, that's just making a really nice pattern of light blue with the white. It really shows off the blue. Um, I am a big fan of pearls. They're like one of my favorite materials to use. So, favorite materials to use. I'm a little obsessed. I have, well, I've been using my pearls, so I don't have quite as large of a collection as I used to, but I do dearly love pearls. <laughs> And you can get them in all sorts of shapes and colors and sizes. I'll show you some real quick. So, move my, let's see, see if I can't find some. Now, some of these pearls are cultured into these shapes. I'll just show you these real quick. Purple is one of my favorite colors anyway, so. But see, these are little stars. They're freshwater pearl stars. And they're cultured into that shape. That's pretty cool. And then these ovals uh, may or may not be cultured into that shape. So, but I just, very pretty. Nice color, nice pearlescence to them. Um, and then, oh, I don't know. I have some, uh, Here's a nice strand of pink pearls, but these have double holes in them. See that? There's a hole here and a hole here. So they'll work great for like bracelets with like some spacers in between them. I think that'll be really pretty. So, all right, onward. Work on this necklace some more. So once you get down far enough. I mean, like I said, I generally eyeball it. So can start introducing some other sizes and shapes of beads. And I don't always use all the beads that are on my beading mat. When I, like the final selection is not always the final selection. Like I might decide when I'm down here that, oh, whoops, I don't have any more room for these beautiful carved oval beads. So we'll, we'll just have to see. So have to see how that goes. Oops. It's getting away from me. I cut off a large section of tiger, tiger tail. This is going to be a rather nice lengthy necklace, I think. The other thing I love about pearls, though, is that they're not too heavy. They don't weight a necklace down too much. Like if you use all, all uh, gems, gemstones, it can get awfully heavy very, very quickly. And a lot of people don't like that weight on their neck. So, so I try to mix it up with at least some freshwater pearls to alleviate the weight issue. So that's, it works. It works out really well. I mean, I think some people use acrylic beads or lightweight metal beads instead of pearls, but of course pearls are better. 
I'm just kidding. Just kidding. They're rather nice. And they're pretty. They come in all different shapes and sizes and colors. Oh, there's a kitty again. He may, he's making happy noises, though. So let's see here. So we're, I'm over halfway done with this necklace. We should start introducing some other shapes and colors of beads now, I think. Let's see, we'll put this one here. Oh no, we don't want to do that. We're going to use one of these navy blue beads, I think. Oh yeah, gems are just a huge variety of prices. So like, you can buy strands that only cost like a dollar or two, or you can buy strands that cost hundreds of dollars. So it just depends on the bead. I think um, I recently bought some Organite and they're pretty pricey. So pretty though. And um, some sapphires. No blue sapphires in that strand though. They're all different colors and well, just colors. They're faceted and they're really tiny. About the size of these little blue beads. So, and they're just fun. I love, I just love rocks. It's a problem. We have a modest rock collection at home too, so. Let's see here. See, I worked this, this bead in here. So I'm going to check to see how much length I have left. So I'm about, I can put on a couple more beads, I think. Before I have to start going up the other way. So maybe I should. Yeah, I think I will. This necklace is probably long enough. I kind of like how this pattern looks right here. So we'll just repeat all this all this beading on the other side. And you can do asymmetrical necklaces too. This is not going to be one of them. And they are also a little bit more tricky. Um, it's not bad. Just you have to coordinate the sizes of beads. You have to make sure it matches the length on each side. Otherwise the clasp will be lopsided. Um, and that's not always a bad thing. Like some people like the like if you have a really pretty decorative clasp. Some people like it to the side or in front. So you can hang a really pretty pendant from a decorative clasp, and it's just kind of neat. String these up. Okay, now we're ready for one of these. Yeah, I hope I have enough of these little blue beads. I should. I've done that before. I got into the end of a necklace and realized, oh, oh, I'm like two beads short to finish it up. I'd hate to see that happen today. Most of the time I'll count them out, but I'm going to play it by ear tonight. String some beads on. Alright, so that's the end of that per pattern. So we're just going to do a whole bunch of freshwater pearls now. And these little blue crystals. So. String that. little zen like. I think um, 
I think some people would think this is a little bit repetitive, but it's not too bad. A lot of other people say you have to have a patience of a saint to do this. Sometimes, especially if I drop a lot of beads, it can be kind of frustrating if my fingers turn into thumbs. And I'm losing beads all over the place. But that's okay. Get it sorted. Yeah, so I was really excited to use the snowflake. If that's not completely obvious, I just so pretty. so they don't get lost. Turn these up. I'm actually going to move these beads over here, I think. Okay, it's not going to autofocus on them. That's good. I had my eye pins over here before I, when I was doing the testing of the video and the camera couldn't focus on them so I had to move them out of the direct line of the camera <laughs> and I was like oh it's in focus it's out of focus it's in focus it's out of focus I don't know how well the camera really digs shiny things so which is oh well I guess it's not too bad of a problem these aren't too like these that have all sorts of little crystals all over them. So. I'm going to string these together. Get this going. see here and then just see how many more beads we have left to string up here oh quite a few one two three four five six seven okay so we'll do seven more pearls Yeah, so I don't wear nail polish all that often. When I'm working with like wire and stuff, it uh it just gets scraped right off. And then sometimes using the tools too, I'll nick my nails and so and I keep them really short for the same reason. So yeah, it's just kind of, it's pretty relaxing. I forgot to count these pearls as I was stringing them on. Ooh, we're going to have just enough of these little crystals, I think. I don't know if we'll have enough for a pair of earrings or not. I'm have this right there for now. Two more pearls, maybe. Move this up here. Keep moving that stuff. Ooh, one more pearl. Just gonna double check here. Yep, one more pearl. We will have enough of those crystals to do a pair of earrings. That's kind of exciting. See here. Just make absolutely sure I measured this right. 
acrylics are a natural material, so they don't always match up side to side. You can see there's just a little bit of, of an aberration here, but that's okay. It's not a huge problem, so. Put this on. Wire guard time. So now I always hold these up. And that's to see how much space is right here. You want to leave a little bit of a gap because when this is all curled up, it'll fill in that gap. And if you don't give it enough of a gap, like the tension will get so tight that it can break. So I always try to leave enough of a gap there that won't become an issue later, but not so big of a gap that it's hugely noticeable. Oops. Oh my goodness, that was loud. Sorry. Dropping tools and beads. There we go. I'm going to throw this tiger tail away. Straighten this one out. I'm going to grab some jump rings and a clasp. These clasps are actually uh, nickel free. So, special kind of metal that's nickel free. So are the jump rings. I think the only one that is questionable are these wire guards. So I think sooner or later um, I'm going to be doing a Twitch stream for charity and donating jewelry to like women's shelters and stuff that I make on camera. So if there's like a shelter or someplace in particular you think could use some donations for jewelry or whatnot, uh, just let me know. So I try to do good wherever I can. I really like donating. Um, I've done this before. I've donated like several Tree of Life necklaces to a shelter um, so women can be, you know, have just something nice to wear when they go out and try to find a job after leaving a bad situation. So I think it helps with confidence levels and all that sort of good stuff. So it's kind of a boost to like an emotional boost to know someone cares enough to donate something to help you rise up. So, but see, here's the necklace. I think it turned out pretty well. You know, little, little glamour shot here. Doo, doo, doo. So that's a necklace made. What time is it? Well, I've been doing this for about an hour so far. I think we can have a little bit more time to make some jewelry. Um, so why don't we do that? I have to clean up the beading mat just a little bit. So I'm going to mute the mic and turn on intermission for just a second. And I will be back in a moment.
Oh, Hello, I'm back. Um, I know I said I was going to make a pair of earrings next, and I'm going to do that real quick before I completely clear off this bead mat. Um, I just move some beads around to make sure I have enough room to do other projects. So it's kind of exciting. So these are head pins. They're called head pins because they have a little flat piece of metal that will keep the beads from falling off. Eye pins, they are right here, are also metal, but they have a little loop at the end, a little eye. So we're going to be using head pins for this quick project. Just going to make a simple pair of earrings. So I'm going to string on one of these little blue beads. I'm going to take a couple of freshwater pearls off the strand, put a pearl on the wire, and then one of these awesome spotted beads. I just They're just so much fun. Just glass. Nothing, I mean, all beads are special. I'm biased, but. So, here we are. Have those all made up and grab some round nose pliers. Make some loops on the end of these. Get that there. So I have one lone bead left, and that'll go in a special um <laughs> well, a special pile of beads where my lonely beads go. And like one of these days I'll make something really neat and abstract and um, like uh, that uses all my last one beads <laughs> from projects. So yeah, I just if I have two beads left and that also happens quite a bit they go in a little baggie into a special bag that's for earring pairs. So, special bag for earring pairs. Those are just when I have two beads left instead of just the lonely one. But the lonely ones won't be lonely forever. I'll get made into something cool. Just gonna tuck this tail in, maybe. Let's see here, how'd that go? That's not too bad. It would be easier if I'd use my round nose player to hold this in place, but I am as stubborn as the wire is sometimes, so. There, that's not too bad. Now I'm going to grab some ear wires, fire long gems, sterling silver plated over surgical steel. So, so and for the curious, yes, I will be uploading the Twitch streams to YouTube at some point. Um, yeah, so that ought to be good. That way everybody get, can get a chance to see. I know I don't think Twitch hosts uh, videos forever. Um, Maybe once you become an affiliate, they host them for longer, but I am not that, not that known yet. So this is honestly my first stream. So, so that's not so bad. Just trying to get into the swing of things. And so these, oops, well, we'll just hold this one. This is the earring. That one is down here. Earrings that match the snowflake necklace we just made not too long ago. This little bead. So, yep. Necklace and earrings. Every once in a while, I'll sell things as a set. Um, sometimes I just list the earrings separately and let people choose whether or not they want to
buy the earrings with the necklace or you know vice versa so it can be kind of problematic if somebody says well I don't like the earrings or I like the earrings but I don't need the necklace so sometimes I just link one to the other and say if you want matching earrings go here and if you don't that's fine too so this is this project all taken care of that was one of my favorite projects for today I think those quartz to the side, put these pearls to the side. Now I'm going to grab some. Oh, those came out of a different bag. I'll just put those right there. All right, so now we have whole oodles of Christmas stuff to work on. I just put the lonely bead in with the other lonely beads so um so let's work on some earrings i think so we have doubles of we have a lot of pine cones i think those will make really cute earrings and then we have some mittens quite a few mittens too many to make earrings with but that's okay we have some candy canes a bunch of bells, two bells. We have another stocking and one lone tree. So we're just gonna put the one offs over here. So we have enough to make one, two, three, four, five, six, six pairs of earrings. That's quite a few pairs of earrings, if you ask me. I don't know if we'll make all of them today or not, but it'll at least be a good start. So let's see here. I think for the bells we should either do red or silver. I don't think the green is. I don't know. Put this back. Bells. Red or silver. Red. Give it a little pizzazz, I guess. If I had gold, I probably would have gone with gold. Because that would be really pretty, but Grab some of these eye pens. There. So what we're going to do is we're going to string one of these eye pens on each of the little balls. And what we're going to do is when the, when these are finished is we're going to string these to these and then these to ear wires. So they'll be kind of dangly, but very, very pretty. So I'm going to bend this, bend this over, bend this around. So yeah, I'm hoping to make uh, jewelry making on Twitch a regular thing. Um, I believe Mondays is 5 to 7 and yeah, that's Monday. And then Friday from 6 to 8. I started a little late today because I was having some techn technical difficulties. Um, I had to reduce the resolution a little bit to get the connection to stay, uh, well, stay good. Um, so that's all good. All right. So one thing to note when you're cutting the excess wire off of these, I always try to cut off from the inside. Needle these uh, snippers, wire wire cutters fit in there pretty good because they have that tip and you might want to make sure to hold this wire so it doesn't go flying just get that as close to the other edge as possible there's some excess wire we'll throw that away sooner or later and then we're going to take bent nose pliers Open up these loops. And the other thing you can note is that you always want to open up these loops away from yourself or towards yourself. Because opening them this way uh, ruins the, uh, well, it makes the, the loop weak. So 
I don't know that it would ruin anything immediately, but it would make the wire a little bit weaker and it wouldn't hold up nearly as well. So, get those. So that's those, and then we're going to put those on ear wires. Grab some one of these sterling silver plated over surgical steel, steel ear wires. There we go. Open these loops a little bit more. So yeah, I've been making jewelry for a really long time. This is just some nice, simple stuff to get me used to streaming on Twitch and not too, not too hard to do. Yeah, there's that one. Let's see here. Put this one on here. Perfect. Came apart. Let's see here. Yeah, that's still good. Okay. Put that. Being a little persnickety. Sometimes working in these tiny spaces, it can be a little hard to get the things to go where you want them to go. But anyway, here's a pair of bell earrings. I'll have to show you all the, all the other cool stuff I made in my trial videos to see how well this Twitch stuff would work. So, there. That's pretty good. So, just set these aside to the pile of main jewelry. Um, yeah. See, I'm almost, I'm starting to run out of steam here. It's time for dinner soon. So I think we'll do, can we do silver or red ones with this one too? Let's take a look here. I know I did a pair of candy cane earrings already. I'm just going to break off this stuff. I don't want to make an identical pair. Let's see. Just show you guys what I made real quick that's all holiday-ish. Little pair of tree earrings. Holiday tree earrings. I really like how these turned out. I really love these ear wires too. They're nice and long. Don't really need backs with those. And then there's these little guys. Little snowmen with little dangles. And on the backs are snowflakes. That's really pretty. I thought I would upload the the trial videos to YouTube, but the sound was off in one, and then in the other one it was very choppy. The video was really choppy, so there's some snowman. They say joy on the bottom. There's another one of those. Let's see here. Oh yeah. I love these. They're little snowflakes. Here's another one. Snowflake. So these are going to be available at my show tomorrow. Um, which I am rather excited about. Um, should be a lot of fun. Okay. Like that. And then there's this one. Snowflake, snowflake. I thought those were really pretty. And then there are these, which are also really pretty. Oh, I know what I did with the candy canes. Here's another one of those. I turned them in the, I turned one into a keychain with the red. Let's see. I made a few keychains too. 
candy cane with a red bead and a snowflake. And yeah, I really wanted to upload those videos to YouTube because I covered some handy tips and tricks in those, but I did about the same this time, so we'll see. And there's this one. Christmas tree with a snowflake and red bead. One of the joys with the blue bead and one of these crystal ones. And a snowflake. And then some bells with a pine cone. That's all we need. So that's all just kind of fun stuff. Um, you can find my videos on YouTube at YouTube slash Zenith Jade. Um, and you can find me other places on the net using the same handle, Zenith Jade. Same goes for Twitter, um, Instagram. Oh, Facebook is Zenith Jade Creations. Um, I believe you can see that on my intermission screen. And then uh, Patreon. If you want to support me on Patreon, that would be amazing. Um, I am going to be offering to make some plushies uh, live. Um, up to four times a month. Um, I was thinking of reserving Monday for custom plushies, but I'm willing to negotiate days and times. Um, especially if you are supporting me through Patreon. I want you to be able to watch when I'm making a plushie. Um, and yeah, so all the things. You can also request custom orders to be made live. Um, and you can contact me through my Patreon or through my website, which is zenithjcreations.com. I do have a contact form there if you have questions or want something custom made. Um, or you can comment in chat. So, yeah, lots of ways to get in touch. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys another day. Uh, probably Monday is my next scheduled Twitch streaming. I will be announcing like random streamings that I'll be doing on Twitch on Patreon. So they'll of course get a heads up if you're a subscriber. Um, yeah, so exciting. All right. Well, you guys have a great night. Uh, I will see you next week.